Greetings! Today I would like to share with you a web application that I made um, that serves the purpose of experimenting with microtonal music and Zen harmonic music. But before I begin, I would like to thank everybody who subscribed. We have more than 770 subscribers and more than 22,000 views in total and very, 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 very positive feedback. Thank you very much uh, for everything, guys. I deeply appreciate it. So what this video is about. In my last two videos, so this one about gamelan and can octave sound dissonant, I was using this technique of uh, plotting dissonance curve, this funky looking curve that basically allows us to relate a certain timbre or like a spectrum of a sound with tuning. And since then, I had many requests from you guys how you can also try to build those dissonance curve and try to uh, generate spectrums that relate to some unusual tunings. And I had to forward you to, well, basically to the program that I made in order to make those videos that was done in Python. It is on my GitHub, link is in the description. But this application is not very easy to install and not very easy to use. So at some point I just decided to create a web application that anyone can use very easily. You just need to go to newtonality.net and you will see this. In short, this application is additive synthesizer inside your browser that allows you to generate uh, samples of inharmonic sounds that will relate to some unusual tunings. And then you can download audio samples, load it into a sampler and use it in your music. On top here, you can see the spectrum that will be generated by additive synthesizer. So each blue line is the partial. You know, on the x-axis we have hertz and on the y-axis we have just an amplitude that is, well, just a relative amplitude of partials. So if this one is one, this is one divided by two, this is one divided by three, etc. It will mimic the amplitudes of the sawtooth wave. One cool thing about this graph is that you can very easily see if partial is harmonic or inharmonic. If the partial falls on this gray line, thin gray lines, that means this is a harmonic partial. And by harmonic, I mean that the partial is integer multiple of fundamental frequency. So if I set our fundamental to 100, you can easily see that our fundamental has frequency of 100 Hertz. Um, the second one is to multiply by hundreds, 200, 300, etc. Down in the bottom you can see a dissonance curve for this spectrum that you see up here. So I won't go into details what dissonance curve is, but in short it is a way to mathematically quantify amount of dissonance of a certain interval. So on the x-axis we have sense. So if we take some kind of interval like for example let's say major third will be 400 cents in 12 tone equal temperament. For this spectrum, if we take one note, let's say C here, and I guess it will be E on 400 Hertz, it will give this value of dissonance. That is about 0 0.8, right? Well, just a bit, tad a bit smaller, like 0 0.75 or something. It's not absolute value of dissonance that is interesting to us. What is interesting is that this curve has these dips at certain points. And those dips are happening when partials of two nodes coincide with each other. And for this harmonic spectrum, if we try to identify at what frequencies or at what intervals those dips happen, uh, it will give us notes of just intonation. Like for example, this is 386 cents, 386, which is just intonation major third. This is 498 which is perfect fourth, and this will be 702, yes, it is 702, which is perfect fifth. So that dissonance curve really is another method, apart from like usual simple ratios one, that allows us to find natural tuning for this spectrum. For harmonic spectrum, it will be just intonation. The cool thing is that dissonance curve is a bit more general than just simple ratios because it also allows us to find relative tunings for inharmonic spectrums. Spectrums where, you know, your partials are not integer multiples of fundamental. So 
Now let me, I guess, show off some of the parameters and show how changing the uh, those will result in different tunings on dissonance curve. Let's see. Okay, so let's look at this section of the app and the first parameter we already used, it's quite straightforward, it is our fundamental. So basically frequency of this first partial. We can put it to 440, you see it will change and it will automatically recalculate dissonance curve. Another quite obvious parameter is number of partials, currently it is 6, we can increase it to 20, we can put any value here like 50. Only you should be aware that the more partials you have, the longer it will take to calculate dissonance. Also, it is not maybe that beneficial to have that many partials to analyze related tunings, as all those you know, higher-end partials, they don't add that much to the uh, perceived dissonance. It's really first several that are important, that play a role in harmony, and our perception of harmony. So I would suggest to start with six and then, you know, adding or reducing this number depending on, well, your goals and what you feel works for you. Uh, so the third switch pseudo octave, I think we will skip for now and let's go straight to spectrum type. So now, as you can see, we have harmonic spectrum. And as I said before, if partial lies on this gray line, that means it is harmonic partials. If we change this, uh, so the spectrum type from harmonic to EDO, which stands for equal divisions of octave, you can pay attention to this one, it will actually move a little bit. Yep. So now, it is not on this gray line, that means it is in harmonic partial, and that small change in spectrum actually moved our minimums of dissonance curve. So, as you can see now, they fall precisely on the gray lines here, right? So, this one is on this gray line, this one on this one. And those lines mark notes of 12-tone equal temperament. Because if zero sense is our unison, it is C. 100 will be C sharp. 200 will be D, etc, etc, etc. Adding more partials for this spectrum will result for us having more minimums in dissonance curve, like 7, we'll add new ones, 8, even more, and then if we go crazy, we will have minimum for every single note of 12 tone equal temperament. So the cool thing about this app, it is, as I said before, additive synthesizer, so we can press this play button, well, to listen how this particular spectrum sounds. Sounds very similar to sawtooth wave, but if you pay attention, it is a bit metallic in the top end. So if comparing to just harmonic spectrum, and then Edo, it's almost like it has some additional like note on top there. And you can see that it deviates. The more partials we have, the more it deviates from the harmonic spectrum. What is cool is that we can control how much equal divisions of octave we target. So currently it targets a uh, 12-tone equal temperament or 12 Edo, which is usual uh, tuning for our instruments, but we can put any value here. So for example, we can put 7. And that will divide octave into 7 parts and make sure we have the spectrum, such as minimums in dissonance curve, fall onto, well, notes of 7 tone equal temperament or 7 either. And again, we can listen to how it sounds. Now it starts to sound even more metallic. And it is expected because we have much more inharmonic spectrum. As you can see, we have more partials that are further away. Like this one is in between, basically, two harmonic partials. Okay, let's put that back to 12 and maybe put... Yeah, let's leave it at here, just make a bit less partials. And now we turn our attention to this pseudo octave slider. Octave is very important interval for music, and it actually differs from all other intervals, because notes octave apart are considered to be the same note, and that is called octave equivalence principle. So, why it is happening? If we play 
like node C, for example, and then a C octave up, what we will see is that all partials of this upper C will coincide with the lower C. So no additional harmonic or like spectral information will be added to the existing lower C sound. And that's why we think that octave, that notes that are octave apart are basically the same note. So pseudo octave slider lets us control at which interval that octave equivalence will happen. So by default, it is 1200 cents, which is usual octave. And that is shown in dissonance curve by having like zero, it has zero dissonance in unison, which is to be expected, I think. And also at 1200 cents, which will mark one octave or one pseudo octave, which is more correct way, I guess, of saying that. If we change that to, for example, 2400, that will place this zero dissonance point at 2400 cents, which is double the octave. And it will stretch all other intervals accordingly. So our fifth was 700, but now it is 1400. Our fourth was 500, now it is 1000. And if we look at the spectrum, it will stretch it up so that each consecutive partial is further away than the previous one. And of course, we can listen to how it sounds. And it sounds actually very nice and very bell-like and very usable to use in music. Of course, we don't need to be like that precise, like double octave. We can put any value here. Like, for example, we can have 1900, which will be octave and fifth. And listen to that. Also very bell-like. But another interesting thing is that we, of course, can make it less than one octave. So, for example, if I put 700, that will make our fifth to act like an octave. Basically, so our octave equivalence is happening in the interval of fifth, which we can also see on dissonance curve as this point is now at 700 cents. And it doesn't sound very good at high notes. So it is a bit interesting. It actually sounds pretty cool if we tune it down to, for example, 120. I actually think it's very pleasant sounding timbre we get here. And you can see that each consecutive partial now is actually a bit closer to the previous one. Another cool thing that we can do here is that if you look, we have our notes here like the minimums of dissonance, and actually maybe I should just increase our frequency a bit so we have a bit more pronounced minimums. So yeah, they don't fall on the usual notes of 12 tone equal temperament, because they're not on the gray lines as I said before. But what we can do is that we can have our pseudo octave at 700 and then divide this pseudo octave not by 12 parts, but by 7 parts. And as you can see, that will change those minimums to lie on the notes of 12 tone equal temperament. So now we have this really different spectrum that has octave equivalence at fifth, but it is actually meant to be played on usual 12 tone equal temperament keyboards. And we can listen to how that sounds, of course. Let's tune it down again. Sounds very similar to the previous one. An interesting thing here is that at that point we kind of start, we kind of get into this gray area because it's not really self evident. Either what we play is a single note or is a chord. Because it's, first of all, it definitely has a certain chord quality. But another thing is that we look closely to the spectrum. This first three partials align within a single octave, because if our fundamental is 120, this is 240, which is 2 to 1 ratio, usual octave. So the first three partials are within one octave. Are those partials or are those just the notes played with a sine wave? 
And also, like other three partials, they uh, lie basically in a second octave. <laughs> so, this entire spectrum can be thought of as uh, just the core, basically, plane. And that's what I think is very interesting here, because we kind of start to bend what we consider to be consonants, what we consider to be dissonance, what is like a single note, what is chord. It all started to get fuzzy, and I think that is very inspirational and very interesting to experiment with. And in order to experiment with that, of course, you, can, you need to first download it. So here we have this download files button that if we press, it will get into processing, and that will generate a zip file that I can save. And if I open it up, yeah, this will generate this sample.wav file that will be uh, of five second duration by default. Here you can control that. Uh, if you put the longer values, you just need to wait a bit longer for it to play and record the sample. And then also two files for a dissonance curve. So you can plot it in Excel or, well, whatever really, and for the spectrum. So you can analyze it, I don't know, share it or save it, whatever really. One thing that I have to say is that this sample file is not instantly, currently at this version at least, it's not instantly loadable into a sampler. You first need to work a little bit with that, and for that I will just show it, open it in Audacity. Uh, Yes, yeah, so first of all, as you can see, the amplitude is a bit small, so you will need to probably normalize it. So if I do it now, just for you to see better... No! Yeah, and also, as you can see, it has this initial attack and then initial silence. And in the very end here, it actually not necessarily will end up in zero amplitude, so you may actually hear a click, you know, in the very end of a sample. So you need to create some fade-ins and remove all the kind of unnecessary data in the very beginning, before you load it into a sampler. And the last thing that you need to do is, of course, if you are targeting some interesting spectrum, like for example, I don't know, you can put like 440 here, you know, make a lot of partials and then you want to have this seven tone equal temperament, you know, play with that, and let's say just normal octave. Whoops. Yeah, le like this. You will need to have a tuning file so you can retune your sampler, and currently uh, my app doesn't allow for creation of tuning files, but I would recommend you to use uh, this website, a Savage.com scale workshop, link in the description. This is from a Savage Microtonal Composer uh, doing pretty cool stuff and have this amazing application that really allows you to create and download practically any tuning or any sampler or any format that you would like to. So currently you will need to use these two apps kind of in conjunction, in conjunction uh, so you can experiment in this microtonal land. This is all that I wanted to share in this video. This application is work in progress. I will continue to work on that. This is not the final version. This is just like a first like beta release, basically. And what I want to add is that more features of how we can control partials, maybe import some spectrum like that you can create as a text file or like Excel or something, then manipulate each individual frequency and amplitude of each individual partials, maybe create some filters, you know, so we can just cut off some partials or whatever, you know, more ways to manipulate spectrum and also maybe more ways to represent dissonance curve, maybe like minus one octave, minus one octave plus one octave and bigger, you know, in intervals. And yeah, and the most important thing, of course, is that I want to add ability for you to play these spectrums right in your browser using like MIDI keyboard or just, you know, regular keyboard. Oops. That should be possible, but all of that will come later, and as new features are developed, I will post new video on this channel. And about like my usual deep dive research videos, I will probably need to postpone making them further away, because now I'm kind of a bit more into coding, and I really want to have something 
that is very accessible and very practical that can enable myself and more people to play around with these ideas and maybe create some cool music. So thank you very much for watching and good luck on your journey. See you later.